Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. This is something I end up enjoying. You never know, it could happen. Well, it's Tuesday Reviews Day. Time for another book review. This is going back a little bit, uh, but I had a little bit of a story to tell, and so <laughs> we can talk about that a little bit. But I am going into, as you probably already know, I am going to review The Last Wish by Andre Sapkowski. I've got a bit of a history with this. I've read it twice. The only book, Witcher book I've read twice. First time, did not like it. But first things first, let's talk about the cover. I'm going with the original cover that I owned because I did get rid of the book because I did not like it. So uh, when I first read it, I did do a turnaround. If you watched our live streams on uh, J.R. Carroll's channel, I've definitely uh, read now the whole series. So I'll leave it to you to, to imagine how I feel about this book now. But anyway, the first time I did not love it. So first things first, the cover, the first cover I loved. I absolutely, it just looks so cool. It's kind of scary, like there's a monster. Oh, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's really well done. Um, I like, honestly, I've, there's very few of the Witcher covers that I've disliked. They seem to go through a lot. They are like, I don't know, it's one of those publisher things where you're like, I can only imagine they get more money that way. That's why they keep doing it. So here we are. Uh, I'll read the summary that I got from Goodreads, but Geralt the Witcher, revered and hated, is a man whose magic power is enhanced by long training and a mysterious elixir have made him a brilliant fighter and a merciless assassin. Yet he is no ordinary murderer. His targets are the multifarious monsters and vile fiends that ravage the land and attack the innocent. But not everything monstrous looking is evil, and not everything fair is good, and in every fairy tale there is a grain of truth. Uh, I think that pretty well encapsulates it. Uh, <laughs> as I did not know, and this might have uh, led to me not understanding uh, this book as well as I could have, but this is actually a short story collection. Um, these are, you know, they're all related to The Witcher, uh, and they're honestly, um, obviously to varying levels, any short story uh, collection is varying levels of good, um, but honestly, they're pretty dang good <laughs> overall. Uh, I like, I, I think I discovered throughout reading the entire series that short stories is really where Sapkowski shines and is longer novels just or novel length books are my least favorite in the series even though I don't hate them or anything I like them but the 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 short stories really really knock it out of the park a lot of times so this uh, short story collection contains the following short stories a grain of truth the lesser evil the edge of the world the last wish eponymous name of the book a Question of Price, The Witcher, and The Voice of Reason. Uh, let's jump into the quotes. Quotes. People, Geralt turned his head, like to invent monsters and monstrosities. Then they seem less monstrous themselves. When they get blind drunk, cheat, steal, beat their wives, starve an old woman. When they kill a trapped fox with an axe or riddle the last existing unicorn with arrows, they like to think that the bane entering cottages at daybreak is more monstrous than they are. They feel better than they find it easier to live. And then another one. Evil is evil. Lesser, greater, middling makes no difference. The degree is arbitrary. The definition's blurred. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. So those actually, too, are very, very indicative of this whole series. Uh, it is kind of like, yeah, he fights monsters, but who are the real monsters, right? Uh, and I do think this is before, like, the zombie book became the big thing, right? And that's kind of a big theme in zombie books is, like, who's the real monsters when it comes down to things? Uh, so, anyway. And then also, Geralt not... Uh, wanting uh, to do any evil and, and to try to stick to his principles as much as he can. Uh, and that's why I, I have an argument that this is not necessarily a grim, dark book, even though it could probably be considered that. But uh, uh, Geralt, he's a good dude. He's a good guy. <laughs> All right, likes and dislikes. Let's, let's talk about that. Um, maybe I'm going to start with dislikes first. Dislikes, I... Like I said, did not like this the first time I read this book. This was back like 10, I don't know, at least 10 years ago. <laughs> I first read it. I was like, I was excited. I did not ever play the games until actually recently. And so that's something that probably was a, a mistake. <laughs> I'll be honest, because uh, it's fun to read them now when you kind of go, hey, Roach, just something like as basic as that. Um, but the dislikes, I remember I struggled. I struggled a lot with the humor. I just felt like it wasn't like translated well uh, because, you know, maybe I was a, a, I don't know, language snob. I speak German and I, I did notice 
it, it, humor is a hard thing to translate over between languages and I thought maybe that was missed. What's funny is after reading it, I thought the humor hit. I thought <laughs> after reading it again, I thought the humor was there. I thought it was good. I thought like dandelion is the, the you know main source of humor, I would say, uh, and uh, cracked me up. And so I, again, maybe I just don't know what I was thinking. And maybe doing this or having read it on audiobook was the right way to go for me. I did struggle too. I remember seeming like things seeming over dramatic, and I think there's a fair bit of that. It's a little over dramatic at times, but it's a book. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't, I think what I wanted at the time was this to be like a monster slayer book. Like I, I knew there was a video game in existence and all that. Uh, and I, you know, video games have action and you fight things and whatnot. So I just figured it was more of that and it was less intellectual and less of kind of like more, you know, less of this thinking through and, um, and talking and whatnot and intrigues and whatnot, which it does seem to more be about here. So let's get more into what did I like, because that's the thing, is this time I really like this. The Last Wish might, I don't know which is my favorite, but it's between this, Sword of Destiny and Season of Storms, the, the, the three short story collections, they were all excellent. Uh, and so it's hard to tell, but I really like these. So um, I like that Geralt sticks to his principles. He does the right thing. Uh, he doesn't want to do any evil if he can avoid it, and that's why he does try to choose. It's it's hard because a person like that in a moral quandary where you might have to choose a lesser evil because that's all there is, uh, sometimes that might be the case. I do feel like in general in this world, we like kind of lock ourselves in to a false dichotomy somewhat. I know as a lawyer, when I am doing a cross-examination, I want somebody to think there's only two options and because both options that I've uh, arrived at for them are bad for them. So either way, that's what I'm trying to do is pin them into a corner and try to get them to say the thing either way that I want them to say. Now what I try to tell my witnesses that are about to testify is that's what the lawyer's trying to do. Does that mean in every case that, that you have to think like that lawyer that, that is asking you the question? No, no, there are often other options, not just the ones that they have fabricated for you. But you better believe I've been able to get a lot of people in that corner. So <laughs> it's, it's doable with a lot of practice, but I'm just saying I do like that it's, you know, there, there isn't always just this like, oh, there's the two options. It's the only way. There are often a lot of options, and, and I like that. I think my favorite short story in here was The Last Wish, the eponymous short story for the whole book. Um, it's got a really, like, I really, it really made me, like, have to go look up, like, wait, wait, what's the, <laughs> there's, a, there's a twist in it that is really excellently done. Um, and I'll go in, eh, I always do spoilers on this part anyway. So I'll do a little bit of spoilers. So essentially there's this genie and <laughs> there's three wishes. And um, as you know, cause that's what you're in the spoiler section here. Uh, but the first wish is just really funny cause it's just stuff that I didn't really understand when I was reading it the first time. And I don't know why, I don't know what was my problem, uh, but I had problems. <laughs> but the first wish is he just does this kind of like hex and he just says it but he has no idea what it means it just it's in some other language he just knows that this is like a common like the thing you say for this hex or whatever this magic that he's trying to use to, to trap the genie uh and so he just says it but it it's taken as the first wish and it's so funny uh i just think it's really clever uh and really well done and then, then the second wish i'm trying to i think the second wish was just like something said in like anger or something like that and it was like get out of here or whatever but that might be the first one which was like some colorful language toward getting out of the way um i'm mixing them up right now but then the third one is a mystery we don't exactly know but we know it relates to to geralt and yennefer to some degree that's kind of all we're given. And so you look it up and you're like, oh, what it is? what is it? And so you know that they're tied somehow, some way uh, in through destiny, right? It was definitely just on this reread, it was more clever. It was more just fun to like, oh, these are like, they're like more intellectual, more kind of tricks and, and clever things. There's some monster hunting and some um, um, fighting and stuff. So that's good, y you know, if, if that's what you like. Uh, and the twists are just a lot better, e you know, easier to kind of take. 
one one of the things I dislike, and this might be more for like later um, books because it wasn't it's not it's not as prevalent in these short stories. But when the and I don't think this is really a spoiler, but for later books because you know the title uh, of any of the later books, but the novel the novel versions will repeat the title like a million times. So you know I, I don't know if you're like me where you you read the title in a book and you're like it's the title, <laughs> but they will like it's like it's the theme of the big of the novelizations and then they will just like they've never talked about the time of contempt before and suddenly everybody's talking about it and you're like why what is what is like why is that now what everybody's talking about oh it's gonna be a baptism of fire and then everybody's talking about it and you're like why is everyone suddenly talking about it other than this is the book, The Baptism of Fire. So I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, all right, if you like this, I thought one of the things in, on, in the very first live stream I did on J.R. Carroll's channel, J.C.M. Byrne, who you should check out his books for sure, uh, he pointed out, and I thought it was a very good point, is that Gerald is kind of like Elric of Melnibone. And now I've heard since then that maybe there's some plagiarization accusations. I don't think, I've read them both. Not like all of Elric, but I've read quite a few, and now I've read all of The Witcher, and then the new one I'm ready for, <laughs> though it should come out later this year or next year. Uh, but Elric of Malnabona is, you know, the albino, uh, he has magical elixir, elixirs, uses some magic here and there. Like, there's some healthy, like, I get it, that people can say that, but the stories are completely different. Um, and and anyway, I think Sapkowski's great. All right, my rating, I'm gonna go with an eight out of 10. It's very solid. Uh, it's probably closer to a nine than a seven, but I'm going with eight. I think it's a pretty solid number on it. Uh, I really enjoyed it, really fun the second time through, which I just seriously, the whole time reading it again, I'm going, who was this person that read this the first time? Now I question everything. What what did I even like about some of the books that I was reading then? Because I really enjoyed it this time. I, I thought I was intelligent enough to get it, but apparently I wasn't. I don't know what my problem was. All right, and then I always add for when I do an audiobook read, like I said, I did read or I did listen to the audiobook. Peter Kenny, holy cow, what an audiobook narrator. I mean, one of the best at really getting unique voices that you can just spot as soon as they're talking, they you're like, yep. And it's not just like, here's my old man voice that sounds the same. Oh, here's my girl voice that's not a girl at all because it's just a high man's voice. I <laughs> Anyway, just excellently done, like really, really well done. That I was just like, yep, I knew exactly who he was each time. Had a nice grisly Geralt voice, just really good grisly. Um, anyway, and I'm doing a terrible job at these, by the way. So don't take these as to what he does. But anyway, highly recommended on audio, just excellent. The dandelion voice is awesome, it's so good. Um, and again, I didn't even really like Jennifer's great. Just anyway, not not bad at all. It is what it is. You just get used to it after a while, though. So anyway, highly recommended. Definitely check it out. It's good stuff. I knew you knew that already. I know you know that already. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll catch you next time. Bye.